Hi, I'm Billy. This is my cognitive decline corner. And I wasted about 16 weeks of my life making a Dr. Octopus cosplay. So now I feel the need to talk about it. And I decided I would make a tutorial. So you can try too if you want to. And just a preview. I, it's gonna be good. You'll learn. Stay tuned. So of course I started by making a plan. I was gonna start with myself and I would need boots, I would need a coat. Actually, I would need two coats. I would need pants for sure, the girdle. Now I know it's more of a tits out kind of look originally, but not for me, so I wore the turtleneck. And then I thought, wait, something's missing, right? The tentacles? So I added those in and then I was thinking, man, this is kind of lame. What if I put like the lower two tentacles on the floor? And I did that. And then I thought, man, what if I was able to move one of the upper ones? And so, uh, well, I put my arm in there and of course the glasses and perhaps the hat. Now, before we start, I want to make something very clear. This cosplay was awful. Never before have I made anything that just went this wrong. Every step of the process was either excruciatingly boring or so difficult I wanted to just give up. I had to make so many compromises and rework and rethink stuff. Never was there a point where I felt accomplished or like I had done something well or like felt good while doing it, you know? Like, you don't want to do this. I, I shouldn't call this a tutorial. I should call this a warning. But if you want to watch me suffer through this, you're very welcome to do so, and I would appreciate it a lot. First off, here is a list of the main materials which I used. I might have forgotten some, but those are the main ones. The tentacles themselves are very lightweight and bendable. The technique which I used to make them comes from this cosplayer. She actually made her own Dog Ock cosplay and it was so freaking cool. Like, it inspired me to make mine. <laughs> Shout out to her, you should definitely go follow her. I made my first segment from EVA foam and then I used silicon to make a mold around it. Uh, I actually made three molds to have it quicker later and I had to do this twice because the first one was too big. So then I could start actually making them. I used polyurethane, which is a two component foam. Please be careful with it. It's very, uh, it's cancerous if it's not cured. Also do definitely use release spray or the residue on the molds will break everything. Um, also, I noticed that I had to do it in the heat, because if I didn't, those things would shrivel up and become unusable. So you should definitely do it outside, because it's toxic, and you should leave them in the sun. I would then do this 190 times or less um, over the course of the summer, and um, each time I made a new batch, I would paint them. First, I would use um, a primer, which did not necessarily work, I had to scrape it off again. Then I painted them black, uh, then I added a silver coat uh, by hand, which is important, and then I painted them yellow uh, and red. After I finished my segments, I bought 25 meters of protective cable tubing and I fit them all on there. However, in the top right tentacle, I added one long painted black aluminum pipe instead of tubing so it would stand up. It's the only one that isn't flexible. Because I'm quirky like that, I will call the dead flowers by their official names and they're called Harry, Larry, Flo and Mo. Flo was super easy to make, I just fit her together, she can't do anything, she is just like made of plastic. The Mo was really tricky because I decided to make her a puppet. Here's a sketch of her insides. Um, I had my hand in this glove and on my index and middle finger there were uh, fishing lines attached like this and through little holes they led into the death flower and it kind of like when I pulled my finger it pulled the segments open. It's it's a cool technique actually, I use it a lot. My hand is stuck inside this cut open water bottle and it really really hurt, but that's business baby. And I stabilized everything using these thin aluminum plates and I still don't know what to call them. Conveniently I own these metal springs and I use them to pull the segments back together. For the movement I just used like normal small hinges. My index finger pulls it fully open and my middle finger only pulls open the last two segments like this. Bro, I was so proud of when it finally worked. Also, everything was way too heavy, so uh, when I moved it, it flung around everywhere. So what I did was I put more fishing line on my thumb uh, and on the secondary segments of the pedals, like on the inside. And when I pulled my thumb, it would 
pull them closed and that was really smart actually, yeah. Attaching the strings to my gloves was actually the worst part because I only had this little little window which I cut into the open bottle and only halfway through did I realize that I could have just attached them to the glove first and then to the pedals instead of the other way around so that was definitely a low point for me. Finally I added another aluminum plate which would then go over the edge of the bottle a little and I attached a velcro belt there to fix it to my wrist. Something which I unfortunately had to scrap because it did not quite work was this mechanism. Um, you see it here in the movie and I tried to recreate it but it turned out to be way too difficult and also now in retrospect it would have made the pedals way too heavy so I'm glad I didn't go further with that. Right, so here's a video of me moving Mo just to show her off a little because I'm proud of her. And now let's get to Harry and Larry. And there's really not much to say about them. They're just made from EVA foam and metal and a lot of zip ties. You can see them here. Now, how I attached them is I had this little plate on which I screwed everything. And on the other side of the plate, I had um, aluminum or whatever, I don't quite remember, uh, things sticking out, which I would then push into the tubing of the tentacles so it wouldn't move, which worked quite well. Also, I got this little thing, I screwed it on there and it holds the steel rod, which attaches the lower two tentacles to my feet. To be exact, I used these materials. Later then I exchanged those um, door hinges for simple steel plates because it was easier. I took my other steel plates and wrapped them around my heels. I pushed in some screws for support and I attached this really long screw which would then hold the steel rod. Right, so there's that. Now before we get to how I attach them to my backpack, here's a picture of all the pieces which I made. For that, I turned a cutting board into four of these little plates, drilled a bunch of holes into them and screwed on some hinges. Then I took this leftover back brace, which already had those latches put onto it, and I fit on a new piece of metal, which would go in there. And it had three latches for the hinges um, and one thing sticking out for the tentacle, which isn't bendable. Do you get what I mean? Like the yellow thing is the pipe and the blue thing is the bolt. And for the other three, I basically just tied the hinges together with these little key rings. You can see them here. Now, usually cosplayers use these pipes and it's all fixed and placed, but mine had to be bendable and movable, so I used this mechanism instead. Unfortunately, I would soon find out that these uh, tubes would break, <laughs> which actually did happen at the convention, but you know, there's nothing that hot glue can't fix. Now, I didn't attach flow permanently to her tentacle body. Instead, I added a carabiner to a rubber band and then kind of just linked them together, which pulled her backwards and I stuck her in there and she kept in place. Now for Mo, you can see I cut open this hole in her side and I added these thick rubber bands. So when I stuck my arm in there, it wouldn't just slip out. Also, this foam is to keep it more comfortable. And if you take a look inside, you can actually see that the tubing broke there too and I just stuck in some hot glue and hope for the best. I've seen very difficult ways to do this and mine is simpler, so feel free to copy me. Um, I use bike lights and they're expensive, but it's worth it. For the top ones, I use these bottle lights, which are made by um, Suck UK, great name. And they can actually change color, which comes in handy. And yes, I did lose one at the last convention and yes, it is 20 euros down the drain. And for the secondary lights, I just use these fairy lights, um, some longer, some shorter, and I threaded them in there, just gluing them and then painting their little bulbs red so they would glow the right color. The girdle is just a front piece. I keep it together with these Velcro straps around my back. Um, it's just EVA foam, but I painted it to look silver. Uh, you know, black base coat and then brush on some silver with your fingers. For the details, I used actual bike chains, which I got from my local bike shop. They were scrap metal and I had to clean them thoroughly and that was no easy deed, trust me. But put together, it does look pretty nice. I like how it turned out and it fits well and it feels comfortable. 
I had a plan in mind for the tritium. Um, the shape I found out is called a truncated isosahedron and you can find actual shape nets on the internet. So I just got one, I printed it out, I cut it out and I glued it together and put some fake gold leaf we had just lying around I guess. Now for the outer shell I got one of those DIY Christmas ornaments. They're made out of two half shells and um, you can put them together. They're clear and you can fill them. And then I just threaded some um, fishing line through the truncated isosahedron and kind of stuck them between the shells so it looked like the actual tritium was floating in its shell. We really just have a lot of stuff lying around and this pressure activated lamp was one of them. And it was perfect actually. So I just printed out the pattern and cut it out and glued everything together. You can see here that on the back side I have a transparent painted blue uh, layer of plastic and then a semi-transparent layer of baking paper over it. So you cannot see the blue when it's off, but when it's on the white light is actually well, just the blue part comes through. Okay, outro. This is my, this is the other side of my room. I moved some stuff over so it looks more mentally ill. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you for watching. It's been great. I don't know if you learn anything or if you have any plans on making a dog all cosplay yourself now, if I inspired you, please show me. Like if I can help you in any way, just comment down below or shoot me a DM. I would be delighted to help or to see what you've been up to. Even if it's already done and you just want to show me, just, you know, I'm here. I want to see it. Honestly, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, follow me on my social media if you want to. Um, Billy Slang on Instagram, that's for art and like, you know, just, but also blame Billy on Instagram uh, for my cosplay stuff and Billy Slang on TikTok for the cringe. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to comment your thoughts or, or criticize me. Tell me what I could have done better and uh, tell me which one of the like eight hairstyles I had throughout this video you like best because honestly, I procrastinated a lot. So yeah, see you, have a great day.